What did you find the most difficult, riding, running or swimming? Um, riding was probably the most difficult from a mental okay. and fear factor. I still have that, <laughs> but I'm riding. Okay. Um, yeah, it was very difficult to get up on a bike. Um, one, just because of, you know, it's all resolved you know, initially from a bike accident. I still have very vivid memories of the accident. So, uh, yeah, very scared of coming off. Uh, and, of course, for me to come off now, it's potentially a lot more dangerous than it was back then. Okay. Uh, I can do myself a lot more damage uh, now. Uh, well, that's a stupid thing to say. But, you know, I can do, I can do a lot of damage, obviously, because um, I'm very unprotected on, on my right-hand side. Um, yeah, so, and, and also, you know, learning to ride with one arm is, is a little bit nerve-wracking. Yeah. Uh, but... You know, I'm okay on a bike now. As long as I'm in an environment I feel safe in, um, I'm fine. So it, the bike was mental. The hardest thing physically was swimming. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm still I'm, sw I'm swimming as best as I can, but I'm still a hopeless swimmer. I've become a hopeless swimmer. <laughs> Went from being an okay swimmer to a really bad swimmer now. But it's just a work in progress like everything else. Okay. Uh, it's probably a bit more frustrating because I just haven't improved the same rate I've I have with my running or my riding. Okay. Um, and is there any consider? Are you able to get a, a limb at all, a prosthetic limb, or not? Not really. Um, this is a prosthetic shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> plastic. Um, because I there's nothing really to attach a limb to. Uh, okay. So they'd have to attach it to my rib cage or uh, and my collarbone. Um, there's no shoulder girdle at all to to attach anything to. Um, there there is potential to get a bionic. Okay. Um, slash shoulder, um, but it's very new um, surgery. Uh, I think they've only just started doing it in Australia, um, and it's very expensive. And there's no guarantees uh, that it's going to be successful. Okay. We're going to be pain free, uh, or you won't get infections because we right. have permanent implants. All right. Um, so there's a lot of cost there to consider. Yeah, uh, and it's for me the thought of more surgery. When they first suggested it, it was just <laughs> something <laughs> yeah, definitely not. Okay. Uh, and I want to be able to speak to you know. I don't know. Another ten years, I might go. Oh, now that I know that there's twenty people in Australia that have it and it's really successful, then I might consider it. But okay. But I'll be far more used to living with one arm by then as well. So you know. Yeah. You, so it's, know. it's not your biggest concern or priority at the moment. No. Okay. Fair enough. All right. So out of all of this, Karen, out of everything that happened, what's the biggest learning you can take from all of this? That you uh, that you have personally taken from mm, biggest learning. I think. Um, well, it's, it's kind of a bit of a lot philosophy, life philosophy, I suppose for me is um, no one goes through their life unscathed with you know things not happening to them or some sort of traumatic event or yeah um, something that causes them great grief. Uh, no one. Uh, so. I saw this event as just like okay, well, this is just part of this is part of my journey, um, and yes, it's closed some doors, and I miss those things I miss, but on the other end of the scale, it's opened up a lot of new opportunities for me, um, yeah. which I'm become I'm very open to new opportunities, even more so than I probably was before. So there's not it's not um, it's, there's there's it's not always a hopeless situation. There's always yeah. other avenues to be successful and learn new things. I've met some amazing people um, post my accident um, that I would never would have met before. My, my life's changed completely. Um, but that's been all about, a lot of that's about attitude as well. You, you decide whether you want to grab those opportunities or whether you, you mm. know, want to sit there and, and mull over things that have happened. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. I don't think that's a good way to go. You know, I'd rather yeah. take the opportunities and go, well, there's still... There's still great things that I can achieve and um, yeah. still a lot of life left. You know, I just want to enjoy it and make the most of it. So with that, you know, you talked about attitude. What kind of self-talk do you, you know, what do you say to yourself so that you can keep moving forward, you can keep achieving and taking on those opportunities? What do you say to yourself? I think I look back at how far I've come and what I've already achieved and that gives me confidence to keep taking that next step. Okay. Yeah. 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 Because I just think, oh, it's coming up to two years now, and I just so just looking so back at the everything that you've done. Yeah, and just go, well, yeah, I've done so much already. Um, yeah. But no, why not just keep going? And yeah, it gives you a lot of confidence by looking at what you've been able to do. Yeah. And how has this affected? We haven't talked about your work at all. How has this impacted mm. your work? 
Mm. Well, my career, I've had a career change since then. I couldn't go back to doing my job, my previous job. It was too um, manual. I need, I, know, I need to be able to, you know, lift patients and move patients yeah. around. So that wasn't possible to do anymore. Um, so pretty much the rest of that 2013, uh, I spent rehabilitating and just recovering and getting myself ready to move on to whatever I wanted to do next and just having a good think about what I wanted to do. And I worked out, um, well, obviously health and fitness is my passion, so I thought, well, what I become a personal trainer. Yep. So 2014, I um, did the course, um, qualified, and now I'm working as a personal trainer. Fantastic. So that's been that's been great. Yeah. But that was another challenge as well, just walking into that room at the start of that course, and yeah. knowing, you know, you got 20 people you've never met before, and they're looking at you going, hmm, how's this girl going to go? You know? yeah. <laughs> Hope I don't have to work with her. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that was a massive challenge as well, getting through that and getting people to understand that, hey, you know, I can do lots of things. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and taught me a lot about what I can, again, what I can do and, you know, what my limitations are. Yeah. So, yeah, so now I'm working as a personal trainer. Okay, yeah. wonderful, wonderful. So, Karen, from the beginning of this journey till now, what is the biggest, I know you've had many obstacles, mm. but what's the biggest obstacle that you've had to face? Hmm. I think there's probably, probably, probably two. I think the first one was, um, was leaving the hospital and coming home and going, okay, you're on your own. Um, yeah. That was huge for us. Like, as much as we were desperate to get home, because mm. we'd been away, stuck in the hospital and interstate for so long, we were desperate to get home. Um, but then getting home, you're like, oh, this yeah. is a bit scary. <laughs> so that was really, that was a really big hurdle to, for us to, you know, we had to get used to, um, at that point I still wasn't obviously all that independent either, so... Um, Renee had took extra time off work, so I could adjust and work out, you know, get get um, get used to how life was going to work, and and also get ourselves into the Caulfield rehab and mm -hmm. get the patients there, so they could start helping us as well. So that, that was a huge hill. I know it doesn't sound like much, but at the time when you've been like enclosed in the hospital and secure and got people mm -hmm. looking after you all the time, to be suddenly being by ourselves, that was um, it was very challenging. Um, and probably the other one is just um, the ongoing physical. Um, Discomfort, which is just that, that's just an on. I've, I've had that since I can remember feeling anything. Um, so when you say discomfort, you have pain. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So you got. I get like I have phantom pain. So that's okay. um, limb, phantom limb pain, uh, and also because well, skin grafts can be very tight as well. So I feel like I'm li living in a compression stocking <laughs> at okay. times. Things get very tight, um, and I can't control my. I can't always regulate heat very well. Okay. Uh, uh, so that's it's those physical things that can drag you down a little bit um, yeah. that you that you deal with every day. If I'm distracted and doing stuff, I'm fine. But sometimes you just see around, and go, oh, that's really annoying me. Yeah. <laughs> so on particularly hot days, you have to be extra careful to stay cool. Or uh, yeah, I try to be. I, I just like I just sweat out of every other part of my body, basically. Yeah. But yeah, it's just uh, it's yeah. I really I get just ridiculously hot. Um, so yeah, I'm very careful about, you know, being out in two hot days, I try and stay inside and yeah. um, just take care of myself for that and not train in the middle of the day and, you know, it's too hot. Yeah. But, yeah. And um, your life now, so previously you were training up to, you know, t two times a day. Where are you now with training? Um, training up to two times a day. Fantastic. <laughs> well done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, shorter distance stuff for me now. But, yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm still, I'm back obviously running, swimming, riding, um, doing tri, so I've done two triathlons well, now. Um, it's amazing. Which, yeah, which has been <laughs> incredible. Yeah, I did the first one in November, which was, um, yeah, it was really, it was really, really good. I got through it okay. I was very stressed about what the water was going to be like because my swimming yeah. was not great, but it was a really calm day. So Were you emotional when you finished? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. It was like, you certainly, even the whole race I was thinking about going, oh my God, the last triathlon I did was, you know, it was the same course <laughs> as yeah. the last one. So it was just weird just going, okay, life's quite a lot different to the last one, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and then I did one last weekend, which is just for para triathletes, which was fantastic as well. So all everyone in it had a disability and, and that was extraordinary because mm. you, you get to talk about other people and talk with other people and all the modifications they had to do to things and how they've got to where they've got to and everyone's got a story but we're all no one's a standout it's not like yeah mm. everyone's just got everyone's got their own story the same. so yeah. it was um it's it was really inspiring okay yeah, yeah it sounds like it yeah. totally is inspiring yeah so another thing that's inspiring is um you've started a wonderful foundation 
yes. the Start Foundation. Yes. So tell me about that. Yeah, so the Start Foundation began, well, the idea began very early on. I was only, I'd only been home from hospital probably a couple of months and um, I saw Shane Crawford right across Australia uh, for the breast cancer. And I was sitting with a friend and I said, oh, I really, I was, I was talking about the Royal Adelaide Hospital, how they'd just been over backwards looking after me and my family and I really wanted to do something back, give back, give something back. Um, so... Uh, my friend and I were saying, well, she was a cyclist as well. well you know, we could ride across Australia. <laughs> and it really started this really, uh, you know, low-key, just general chit-chat. Um, Why don't we do that? So, you yeah, know, I started talking to, I talked to my partner first. She's like, oh, here we go, something else. <laughs> yeah. And then um, my sister-in-law and a few other friends are like, yeah, I reckon we should do that. So it really just was a group of friends going, oh, yeah, let's do that. So the idea of the foundation mm. was born from that. Um, so what the foundation is really about is um, is, a, is a ride, starting with the launches in April, May 2015, so this year. So we're going to do a ride from Perth to Melbourne. Yeah. Um, we're going to stop in at Royal Adelaide Hospital on the way and donate um, some funds to them for a, a um, research project in the area of critical care. Yeah. Um, and once we get back, and hopefully we'll be on the map with a lot of other companies and gain some sponsorship, and we'll um, from then on our goal is to um, support other people with disabilities so they can achieve their sporting dreams. Fantastic. Um, so we'll do that through a grant process. So they'll be able to come to us and apply for grants, and we can potentially give out funds to help them. We're wonderful, like wonderful. Or whatever they need, basically, to get them to their own start line, hence the name Start Foundation. Okay, yeah. fantastic. So how can people contribute if they want to? Uh, they can contribute directly via our website, which is um, startfoundation.org.au. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's probably the easiest way. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's good, it's good. Good. <laughs> yeah, there's a do- there's donate buttons on every page, I think. Um, so yeah, all donations are really very welcome. Um, but uh, we're hoping it's going to be part of something that's going to grow and grow, and yeah. we're getting more known around not just Victoria but across Australia. Um, with a lot of the disability organisations and they can refer them to us and yeah. hopefully can help some individuals out. So that must feel good. Yeah, it's, 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 it feels great. Um, we've come a long way, like it's 18 months ago since the idea formed. Um, we've achieved a lot so far in getting set up from nothing into a not-for-profit business. Yeah. Um, and we're really excited about what we are trying to achieve. It's given me a sense of purpose outside of everything else. Um, it's, it's really uh, given me, uh, well, that combined with my sport and now working again is, yeah, that's pretty much everything <laughs> I really want yeah, <laughs> at the moment as far as me moving forward. Yeah, um, yeah no, it's, it's really exciting to, to be able to do something and make a difference to people's lives. Yeah. yeah. So thank you so much, Karen, for coming here today and sharing your story. Mm, it's truly, pleasure. truly inspirational. Mm.